I want to tell you about something that I would like to work on in 2015, and that is to make a creative business a sustainable, as in it pays for itself, it maintains the business, the product, the services, um, from one of these Beehive Farm pods that I've um, I've been looking at, but also I'm going to be helping them putting those on the Airbnb and a variety of different things in 2015. Um, also, Beehive Farm is going to be the location for bus bushcraft 2015 in may so perfect time to put something together i know it's january and nobody's got any money so probably going to put a kickstarter together in february but i wanted to give you a bit of a background as to all the areas that i've been thinking about about this creative space so here's the pitch um i want to combine the best roasted coffee experience so all pressed coffee from shoreditch in london which i've had many times before i absolutely love uh, there's a couple of coffee shops in Nottingham that use their beans, their hand-roasted beans as well. Um, I want to combine together a social co-working maker space. So it's co-working for two or three people because we haven't got a very big space. Um, also put a laser woodcutter 3D printer in there. And then at weekends we um, have a Coda Dojo using the Coda Dodo, Dojo program for kids, training kids how to use programming, how to do programming. Um, we will also have paid nightly classes for adults to learn about the internet and the cloud. And instead of worrying about footfall coming into the countryside, we already got an established Fiverr gig, which we do laser cutting jobs, I've done stuff for people in blowing America and France and all over the place. So I know it works. Um, our social space will employ part of the sharing economy model as well, where we barter our digital services for local products and services to enhance the reach of our concept business so it is very concept because there's not many maker spaces out there that have gone retail as well and i've only seen one maker cafe in london which kind of does this but i want to add in a few other little bits as well because i they're the bits that really interest me and i think work so this is what they look like this is the um beehive hut pop-up pods if you like they were designed specifically for people to glamp so people who don't want to put a, a tent up, they can bring all their stuff that they would normally bring for camping. There's a heater inside of this. It's all it's super insulated. It's got all privacy and everything else in it. And instead of putting your cap, your tent up, you turn up with all your gear and you just basically spend the night in that. And I looked at these thinking, they're great for that. And I love the fact that they're on a trailer so they're movable. But you could also do like a pop-up business for this. So like a pop-up pod. And although these ones are built just for that, for people staying overnight, you could we could customise this to be wider or whatever configuration really to, to suit the pop up the shop. So I want to deliver awesome coffee, co-working, a maker space and a coded dojo all in one space. Uh, using all pressed coffee, which is sort of hand roasted coffee with a wow, because it always wows me when I've had it. It's like, wow, that's amazing. Obviously, Brewster is the important part there as well, which I'd probably go on training for. Well, I would go on training for, not probably. Co-working, countryside, connectivity, coffee. I've kind of got those three things in my mind. I love working in the countryside. Connectivity has been a bit of an issue, but we can get a package for 4G. And also, fibre is coming to this village really soon as well. Coffee, no-brainer. Um, Coda Dojo. When I went to Mozfest in uh, London, last year november time i was really impressed by the idea of teaching kids how to code how to program and there is a lot of kids here in summer and uh, one of the activities we could be doing is training those kids and i was thinking at weekends when i'm with my daughter that it, i should be showing my daughter and whoever else wants to be up, uh, be around and the parents can be there as well and the parents can have coffee they don't have to necessarily interact with the the programming teaching but they could sort of follow along as what the kids are doing and then the maker space i need a maker space to do my fiverr gigs but also it could be just a maker make space hub and i'm starting to see a lot of uh, conversation and social around uh, social hubs maker hubs where you can send in what you need making uh, they pay online and then they come and pick it up or you post it and i want to wrap all this together with a drop cam in there you've got the awesome coffee co-working for two or three people because obviously we haven't got a lot of space um, which all of these little things as well bring revenue in so you've got the coffee you've got the co-working the coda dojo is has to be free the maker space obviously that can be uh, i'm looking at probably about a penny a minute for the for the laser cutter 
So those, those are the things I'm just going over, really. These are the things that I think make it stand out. Amazing coffee. There is a hell of a lot of bikers that come through here as they do a, a trail around here. So you can have a, an espresso bar for the bikers. 4G connectivity via EE. We can get 50 gig of data a month for 50 quid, which is not bad. We're also going to use pol pol polka spots for distribution outside of the um, pod. So people who want to use our internet, they can pay via SMS, things like that. I want to do this for like 12 hours a day. So 7 a.m. in the morning till 7 at night. And run it like the internet runs. I know the internet runs 24-7, but having an early morning start, doing a, a live show every day as to where we're getting to, being transparent about the books, being transparent about um, the putting together the programme for the kids, for the adults, um, who the new co-workers are, how to get new co-workers, things like that. Um, but we'd probably close Monday, so it won't be seven days a week. And... It would allow me to do five work, catch up after work, passing people. So if people finish at five, they can come by a, a coffee or evening classes. Uh, weekend specific training. So we'll have two so slot, uh, slots, one till three, five till seven. Uh, the laser wood cutting will be 24-7 ordering online. Obviously, we're only open from seven till seven. But I can see a huge chunk of my time being doing the laser cutting and then doing um, the coffee. So if the order came in after seven at night, I could work on it at the caravan get it all mocked up, get it done the next day or the next couple of days. Obviously, obviously, we have to look at that. The co-working, that would be me finding local freelancers within the area who wanted to either spend a couple of days a week in uh, co-working in the caravan, and not in the caravan, in the co-working in the pod, and they would get free coffee, free internet for a flat fee. Also, one of the big things about this is um, payments via card. There are so many places in the countryside that do not accept cards, and I don't get it. I really don't get it. Maybe it's a charges thing. Maybe it's a lack of education thing. Maybe it's that they need the liquid funds to be able to go and buy resources, you know, like cash and carry. I don't know. But having card payments via the iPad very easily uh, done, I think, will be a massive, massive bonus for, for a lot of people who don't carry money, especially in the countryside where there's no ATMs as such. Well, not a lot of ATMs. Live streaming camera. This is an important part too that I want people to be able to see. We want to have the audio on, audio on all the time, but I want people to see inside the space. So who are the customers and the how does it make money part? Um, I don't know what I did there. Oh, there you go. Regular bikers that use the Beehive Cafe uh, interested as coffee of superior quality in the Midlands. So there is a great cafe here that does amazing food. I wouldn't want to jump on their territory. Um, Fiverr online work is steady. That will mean funds that come in every two weeks. Coda Dojo is free, but obviously adults would be dropping their kids off or staying. Therefore, there's coffee sales to be had. Advertising via the Pie Street, this would become the HQ for it. The co-working slots, we would probably make it so that the three slots paid enough to cover rent and coffee and internet. And then that would sustain the pod uh, in terms of the, the farmer getting his rent, etc., etc. Um the laser wood cutting service, we would have to rent the laser cutter, but we would do it on a penny a minute um, cost. And then there'll be also consultations there for designing custom pieces and uh, training how to make it in, in the free software. And then I was thinking that we could have some sort of eye level treats for kids that are super healthy, super local, um, or at least ethical. Uh, and not full of sugar, and they're kind of you know good good for kids rather than bad. Obviously, they'd be the pricing margins might be a lot lower than selling rubbish, but I like the idea of it being a social hub as well that the kids and parents can interact. So the USBs, the things that I think are unique to it, the best co coffee experience in the Midlands, um, laser wood cutting. Uh, existing digital community via Fiverr and people per hour, actual work coming in, but I need a space to be able to do it in. A social space for kids and parents to get together. Digital card, card payments and longer opening times. Uh, a drop in and collect maker space. Uh, and live streaming and social media integration to wear awareness of services. So we can literally fire up a camera and start streaming to the web from the space. Uh, we can have people drop in from the local area, makers, etc. etc. This is a bit contentious, I guess, and people might be a bit put out by it, but I think this is why some countryside businesses fail. Um, there's often a lack of footfall. 
an awareness plus their their product that they're selling can be like some crazy chutney for like six quid that you know you could get for a couple of quid in Tesco's. Um, obviously, not everybody wants to go to Tesco's, but I think sometimes you know the the, the costing of things puts people off, puts me off. Pricing is not competitive, like I said, within the city offering, especially with parking. The their USV is is not attractive enough. Um, you know, I I've seen it many times where a shop is opened up with loads of loads of stuff inside and they're really excited about starting their business and then there's no footfall there and it doesn't seem to they don't seem to change very quickly it seems to just stagnate as that for like six months 12 months and, and then it dies so i kind of want something that is dynamic and fluid and moves quite a lot space does one thing does not employ pop-up store mentality in terms of you know change things up remix things electronic car payments i can't get my head around that like i said earlier nobody wants to remember to have cash on them these days um, the inventory of things that they sell is often manual um, it's not tied to a digital management system and a reordering ability so when we get low on coffee when we get low on, on the variety of items that we sell service wise I want to have an updated email about the fact that we need to reorder I want that automated I want that digital um, only services local walking demographic instead of inviting in a global remote audience so most places are just literally shops on on the um, on the high street kind of approach where people walk past they look in the window they go in they get what they want and they come back out what this business does is it's 24 7 and it's global and we're already using an existing service online to bring clients in so the space really is just like a front of house like a digital front of house really for that this is the layout it's a bit rough because i sketched it in in paper so we had we would have these sort of enclosed co-working spots at the top that do look a little bit like toilets i guess but like a seated area with the screen with very thin screens that people can sort of walk in and they can just go and work in their own time a big laser i've got a big large format laser cutter there but probably won't be able to fit one of those in probably have to go a little bit smaller than that coffee making serving payments on the right hand side so got the coffee maker all integrated um the ipad payment system so you can literally it's quite relaxed in there people come to the to the front and we'd probably have some kind of swing out little desk and people order what they want very 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 simple menu three or four items maybe on there and that's it really so the installation these are the things we kind of need ipad ordering system a couple of screen maybe three screens for variety of things to do with the bikers uh, social media training uh, decent coffee machine that's going to be the major cost custom made furniture we could probably laser cut that Graphics, company setup, an accountant, barista training, hardware to run the laser cutter, Raspberry Pi units, cellular internet, I can do all that myself. I've got various bits and pieces I can do with that. Uh, we need a little area for post and packing for the remote orders, virtual orders that we get. And probably stock, so we'd have to build something high up in the in the uh, pod for storing wood stock, acrylic stock and, and internal storage for items that people have bought for pickup. For, so there's quite a few things to do inside it. So some of the future ideas for it, you know, we could rent the, the hut as a drop-in service for business on a trailer, decent van, we bring it down to the premises, your event, your conference, open it up, and we're ready to go. It can be a little drop-in space, live space, bloggers lounge, whatever it wants to be. Uh, live streaming, interview studio space, somebody literally asks us to come down, we brand it up in the, the colours and graphics of the business. We set it up as a, a live studio ready to go with cellular access. Uh, or off, off, offline recording. Um, uh, possibilities with that stuff is huge. Delivery service: we could get uh, a, a, one of the new electric Nissan vans and start doing deliveries in the local area, in terms of you know food, uh, local foods, and the coffee. Uh, weekend events: Bushcraft 2015 in May. This is what really I'm kind of really excited about is knowing that there's an audience going to arrive in May, which is going to be huge and we could do kind of kids out the front who have done the training at Coda Dojo on the bikes doing smoothies pedaling to, to to make the smoothies all that kind of stuff it'd be awesome we're probably going to kick start this because no bank in their right mind will look at me and go yes you're investable because that's just the way banks are these days they don't spend any money and they don't want to spend and give any money out so kickstart approach i've already done it with pie street we bought some screens we put some screens up 
Um, it didn't go the way we wanted it to go. That was disappointing, um, frustrating. I tried to do it in Derby. I've got one screen up, but I haven't got any money to pay for the cloud part. So it's kind of a slow burn, um, the old Kickstarter that I did. But the Kickstarter approach, raise funds from re remote investors, perks for various levels of donation, packages, co-working and, and coffee visits, philanthropic people who want to help a business start are, are mainly the people who put money into these things. Um, and it's easy to find uh, the investors or talking to the banks, like I said. So that's it, really. I just wanted to put this out there. We hope you'll support it. And uh, we won't put a Kickstarter up till probably February time. But your feedback, ideas, suggestions, um, all of that stuff, please comment. Let me know what you think. But I, I'm pretty set on this. It's realistic. It's something I can do. It's something I believe in. Um, the co-working, I've already tried co-working, so I know what that looks like. Coffee, I've had the coffee. The uh, Coda Dojo is the only thing that I haven't really done yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure with my friend's help I can adapt to that. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Um, hashtag startup 2K15 is going to be the, the, the narrative story for it in the next couple of months. So I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks.